everybody. So today we're going to be doing our new catfish review. Um, definitely make sure you hit subscribe, turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any of my amazing videos. All right, boo. And happy Haitian flag day to anybody who is Haitian. Ça passe, my people. So today's episode is a little interesting because <clears throat> it kind of brings up somebody from the past. What we gonna get into? It. Definitely make sure y'all comment down below. Let me know what y'all felt about the episode. Let me know whatever, whatever. Okay, or well, in the comment section. So now Amari is the artist. She actually reached out to Neve and um and Cami because she has this situation where she's been talking to another artist on Facebook, and she actually wants to meet up with this person so that she can like you know do some collaborations or whatever, start recording. And she would have to meet up with them in Atlanta. But, you know, it doesn't really feel right because she never really seen this person. So, it's not really like a romantic type of thing. It's more so a business situation. But she wants to make sure that it's, she's not putting herself into some, like, dangerous or creepy situation. You feel me? So, that's what that's all about. So, Amari, she's actually living out in Ohio but she's trying to expand because Ohio, although I believe Bow Wow did come out of there, right? And Cammy said she's from there. It's not the best place to break out of in the industry, you know what I mean? So, she, like I said, she wants to make sure everything's in the up and ups before she starts heading to Atlanta or anywhere else. Because traveling by yourself, being a female, is, you know, not such a good idea. And so she tells it, uh, Neve and, and, and Cammie that this person that she met, you know, they have a history from 106 and Park. Shout out to everybody who's, who know the 106 and Park era, you know. That was the back in the days. I was Miss 106 and Park. Like, I was on there. I was on there even when I wasn't supposed to be on there. That's how that was going down. See, my hair is looking weird. Um, So, yeah. But... So, as soon as she said the whole 106 and Park thing, I'm like, is she talking about the person that impersonated Bow Wow? I'm like, I wonder. And then come to find out, as soon as she said that to them, that's who they was talking about. And the name came out, it was D-Pimpin'. So, I was like, hmm. So, it actually was D-Pimpin' that she was thinking. So, the crazy thing about it is that D-Pimpin' was a catfish, so it's like... Could this be actually deep pimping or could it be somebody pretending to be deep pimping or like, what is this? What it just, it's given red flags everywhere. You know what I mean? So now it's like, yeah, we all know. And so she, she likes her rap. She has a lot of followers. So that's another thing that kind of made it seem like this could be legit. Um, deep pimping's page actually has like 18,000 followers has been in effect since for like seven years so it's like a real official page and it has like a lot of music links and photos and you know pretty frequent photos and things like that so i mean it's like i said it started out on facebook and then they kind of moved it over to text messaging but never actually video chatted so that right there for me like just never video chatting is always like yeah, I don't know, it's 2021, something, it's, it's just, it just seems like, what? Like, you know, like, it's just unthinkable to me. I know it's possible, especially if you're an older person, but if you're in these ages that are normally in the catfish era ages, like, just not being able to have access to any type of video, anything is just like blasphemy, like, what? It's crazy. So according to Amari, they, like I said earlier, they didn't really have any type of romantic anything and it was totally platonic. And, you know, Neve and, and Cammie is like, you know what type of person that she is, right? She's like, she never watched the show back in the days. I'm like, how do you watch the show? But you, you so interested about this person. Like you said, you heard about her through the episode and that's how you knew about her name and you started, like, following her and stuff like that. But, yeah, you didn't even watch the episode. Talking about she was scared to watch the episode. They're like, yo, she did a lot of crazy things. Like, she 
would try to get straight girls and turn them, you know, because it was kind of like a challenge for her. Like, it made her excited, and she would, like, do some crazy shit with dildos and all that, the realistic, real feel ones, strap ones, and just a whole lot. You know, and I'm like, she just looks like, wow. Like, I'm like, I can't believe that she really didn't know. Like, how... I feel like even if you put up the name Deep Pippin, like at some point it would come up, you know, about the catfish thing. Like, how could you not look? You know, especially if you've been talking to this person for some time. I don't know. That part was just weird. Anyway, so Neve, he was kind of like, you know, thinking like it could possibly be her. So they actually get Deep Pimpin' on the line because he actually had her number still from back in the days when she was on the episode. And then they did a Where Are We Now episode, found out about her getting shot and all that stuff. And I remember they, I remember that episode too. Um, but yeah, she came on and she was looking pretty fly. I was like, okay, big, big Deep Pimpin', I see you. You look like you're getting that money now. Like you look looking real different from back in whatever year that was, 2014 or whatever year, you know. She was up on the show, like, okay. Yeah, I was like, her hair and all that. All right, boo. Yeah, I see you. So, when that happened, like, now she's on the video chat. They asked her, you know, if she is associated with the page, if she knows Amari. All of that was no. She said she actually was, or her manager was actually trying to get the page back at some point or claim the page, but they were unable to. This person supposedly was trying to extort for money trying to get like 5k in order to get the page that is in somebody else's name and i've heard of stuff like that before where certain people they try because somebody claimed it first they're not able to do that and that's it's kind of messed up you know that somebody like literally has your name so therefore you have to kind of resort to getting something else or i guess try to I guess that's why they have, like, all these verified pages now and stuff like that. But it's crazy how if somebody's already claimed it before you came on social media or whatever, then it's like, yeah, it sucks to be you unless you're able to, you know, kind of pay them for the name, which is crazy. Imagine that. I think I heard that someone had to do that. I don't know if it was Nicki Minaj or somebody. I think when Nicki Minaj came on Instagram, she might have paid somebody because they had her name or something i know there was an incident i remember and i'm pretty sure it was nikki but whatever <laughs> that's all it doesn't really matter right so now back to where we are so yeah like i said it was like the page was there for like seven years and all that um but now the main issue the main concern is that it's not deep pimping and even though Neve is still kind of like, mm, I don't know if we could really trust her because she was a habitual liar. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta see it to believe it. But the main thing is like, like I said, it's a security issue is that they want to make sure that if she is to go to Atlanta, she's not meeting some creepy person or, you know, she's out there going and... And she's also, like Cammy said, her I think she said her husband or boyfriend works in the industry, in the music industry, and she's out here sending her music to random people. They could literally take her music. If she doesn't have any copyrights to her music or whatever legal stuff connected to it, she, like maybe she's just writing music or whatever, and you give it to somebody else, they could literally claim that music put it out on the radio or whatever, now they're saying that this is their original music, you know what I mean? And you have, you might have the written version of it, but they also have the written version. You know, it's just a lot that you're going to have to go through. And you could just save yourself the headache. And it's literally, what, I forgot how many tenths of the law possession is, but, you know, I'm pretty sure it would be difficult to go about the whole situation. So it's like, just save yourself the headache. Don't be sending your music to, like, just random people out there. Um, so, yeah, they did go ahead and reach out to D. Pimpin's old manager um, to see if maybe he was linked to it in any particular way. But he gave, he gave, like, a whole story about, like, what happened and how he tried to reach out to the page and 
It, I honestly, it was just kind of like blah 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 because I didn't really hear what he said. I just kind of it kind of went over my head. I just kind of was like not really paying attention to what he said. It was just kind of like okay. Next, so in they did go ahead and call the person. Let's fast forward to that. And when they call the person who runs the page, the, the person like literally hung up. It was some girl. She hung up after saying like hello, and they said that this was Neve from Catfish. And it was like, click. So in the morning, they end up circling back um, after he sent her, like, a picture of all of them, like, you know. And the person responded, like, oh, my God, is D-Pimp is really there? Is, is he going to be mad? <laughs> and they're like, yo, like, just come on the camera. At the end of the day, he can't do nothing to you. I mean, D-Pimp can't do nothing to you. I know I interchanged it a few times. Sorry, guys. But Deep Pimpin can't really do anything to you because, yeah, what is she going to do? Headbutt you through the screen? Like, she can't fight you right now, so just come on and face the music. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what you did. People will never be sorry until they get caught. And so the person who was actually the the person that's been running this page finally comes on i was thinking in my head it's probably some crazy fan especially when they're like oh is he is he is d pimping upset or whatever now that we that the person came on camera or whatever <clears throat> he ends up being this dude named keezy so he actually had some of his music on the page that's the crazy thing about it so what he does he's an engineer and a rapper so he like dubs his voice makes it sound like a female so that it can actually sound like perhaps it is uh, Deep Pimpin' mixed with him so that it's like a collab. Like, what? I mean, that's pretty genius that you're doing this and you have these skills, but it's still kind of weird. He said that he's been traveling the world and doing, like, tours and stuff, and then at the end of the day, like, when they... They'd be like, oh, where's D Pimpin? It's just like, oh, D Pimpin's sick, or D Pimpin's not here right now, but we're gonna perform. They'd be having a camera crew and all that. I'm just like, what? Like, you are real hard with this lie. And the crazy thing about it is that he had literally not even a little ounce of remorse. He didn't really say sorry the whole entire time. He said at one point that this was about redemption, you know, it was just kind of like doing the right thing but i feel like he just said that because he didn't want to look like a super a-hole but he's like you know he feels like the internet is a playground and he was using the opportunities in his in his advantage yeah i get that and i truly agree with to with that to a certain extent uh yeah i mean the only thing that i can kind of say i don't feel too bad for d pimping is that d pimping obviously was doing the same type of stuff back in the day so this is like karma but what about the people that's actually hardcore fans of deep Pimpin? you know what i'm saying they're putting their money to go on these tours that you're creating and then you're pretty much showing yourself somebody who's unknown yeah they'll probably end up liking you because you're fake family or whatever he said he even like was like oh yeah when people be like, oh, let me hear something from Deep Pimpin or whatever. It's like, oh, she's not around right now, but let me let you listen to my little brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just all messed up every way that you look at it. And I just feel like they kind of brushed over. Like, they didn't, re I feel like they didn't really go in on him the way they go in on others. Maybe because he wasn't doing the whole romantic thing. Maybe because he actually was trying to be cool with, with Amari. And he did say, you know, he felt like she was cute. Cammy kind of threw it out there, like, it seemed like you wanted some more than just a collaboration, you know? And he's like, well, I'm happy you said it, you know? He's, I guess, trying not to be too forward or, you know, get involved in any Me Too movements or anything like that. So he's trying to keep it kind of professional, which was good. I respect that part. But, like I said, he just kind of... He's, like, one of those type of people, like, I just feel like they do anything for clout, you know what I'm saying? In the words of Cardi B, like, you do anything for clout, and that's what, those are the type of people you kind of got to be careful with, like, and, but I'm happy that Amari was able to kind of be like, you know what, like, I'm not going to be the only one not getting nothing out of this, like, I don't know if you just doing this whole thing for clout, but she was like, you know what, 
And you was talking about collaborations. You an engineer. Let's work on some stuff. Let's, you said video. Let's do this. So she had that business mindset. Like, whatever comes out of it. I mean, I could definitely see them if she gets past all the lies. And, you know, they really get to build a good relationship. Perhaps, you know, maybe there might be some love connection there. I mean, that would make some beautiful music, right? You got your engineer, studio time, everything all together. So he did end up paying for the studio time when she went to Atlanta because she did go. It looked like it was all three of them. It was her, um, Big Pimpin'. I mean, oh, I keep on calling her Big Pimpin'. D Pimpin' and Kizzy all in the, um, in the studio. So at least she was able to go not just by herself, but she had somebody with her. So that's pretty cool. It's more of a safe environment. You know, although both of them probably want some of her, you know what I'm saying? But... You know, at least <laughs> it's a little bit better or whatever. So, I don't know. I guess maybe in the future, if, if they if they come out of the underground, you know, maybe they'll be able to put some mainstream stuff out there. But we shall see. Well, y'all let me know if y'all hear them on y'all radios. Because, you know, I'm up here in New York, so we don't hear every everything unless it gets real mainstream. But maybe in your local Atlanta, you know, radio station or whatever, you might hear it. Let me know, y'all. Give me an update. But that's pretty much the the episode. It was it was it was okay, but you know, it didn't really have the the spice, you know. But it was it had some some high points. All right, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one later.